President, the late Marilyn Monroe. In life, Marilyn Monroe was indeed a beautiful woman, a true Hollywood glamour queen whose sex appeal was displayed in cinemascope and technicolor around the world. As an actress, she more than held her own among some of the greatest actors of all time. Marilyn Monroe, gifted entertainer, cover girl, as beautiful in life as on the screen. But what made her different than the thousands of other blondes that sought stardom in the Hollywood dream factories? The sultry sex goddess Marilyn Monroe that we have all come to know was just starting to develop in this scene from Dangerous Years, shot in 1948. Hi, Evie. Hi, small change. <laughs> Wait, I got money tonight. Am I gonna see you later? I'm not too tired. But, Evie, I thought we had a date. Look, this tray weighs a ton. Celebrity image making was Hollywood's main stock and trade. Studios worked hard to manufacture and merchandise their on-screen personalities. It all seemed to come so easily for Marilyn, who excelled at projecting the image of glamorous Hollywood starlet. Of all the celebrities before and after, Marilyn Monroe would soon become one of the most famous Hollywood stars of all time. All of this attention was a far cry from her childhood. Raised as a foster child and from time to time in an orphanage, Marilyn could well relate to the needs of these orphan children. Gaining more and more momentum with each new movie released, Marilyn's popularity grew to extraordinary heights. Personal appearances, parades, everyone wanted to meet Marilyn Monroe. The public and press embraced Hollywood's greatest sex symbol. Her life turned into a high-speed trip, propelled by fame. What did the public see in her that set her apart from the others? Could it have been that true touch of vulnerability that could be glimpsed behind her grey-blue eyes? That touch of little girl lost which the camera saw and magnified onto a huge screen? It's that very mixture of sex and innocence that made her a star and also made her the desired trophy of some of the country's most powerful men.
of my life was singing for the soldiers there. I stood out on an open stage and it was cold and snowing, but I swear they didn't feel a thing except good. The adoring public who made Marilyn a star could not have imagined that behind the beauty and smiles there lay a deeply troubled woman. In death, Marilyn Monroe is a mystery. Her enigmatic demise on that long ago August night in 1962 has made it impossible for her fans, concerned citizens, and even the mildly curious to forget and file away the strange events that surrounded her death into the fleeting pages of yesterday's history. When questions about discrepancies in the case continued to plague Dr. Theodore Curphy, the L.A. County coroner at the time of Marilyn's death, he once wearily responded, anything can happen in Hollywood. In earlier years, Marilyn, here seen as shy young Norma Jean Baker, never really found the happiness she craved. Her first marriage to the boy next door, Jim Doherty, soon ended in divorce. It was a loveless arrangement, orchestrated by a foster mother who wanted Marilyn out of the house. Marilyn's own mother, Gladys, though still alive, had long ago fallen victim to mental illness, a fate that would haunt Marilyn to her dying day. Unlike her steady rise to stardom, Marilyn's personal life would time and again suffer shattering blows. The end of her short nine-month marriage to Joe DiMaggio was especially heartbreaking. He would later prove to be one of the few stabilizing influences in her troubled life. Her third marriage to playwright Arthur Miller was not a happy one. Miller, among other things, wanted children here we see Marilyn, happy and hopeful, on the way to the hospital. Sadly, this and other attempts to bear children would end in miscarriage. Marilyn's emotional peaks and valleys became more extreme with each passing year. She developed a growing dependency to barbiturates, and while filming The Misfits in a part written for her by husband Arthur Miller, Marilyn suffered a breakdown. Filming had to be suspended for weeks. Co-star Clark Gable was one of the few who had shown patience with her chronic lateness and eccentric behavior. You're a real beautiful woman. It's almost kind of an honor sitting you just shine in my eyes. That's my true feeling, Rosalind. What makes you so sad? I think you're the saddest girl I ever met. First man never said that. I'm usually told how happy I am. That's because you make a man feel happy. Her marriage to Arthur Miller was coming to an end and she gravitated toward Gable, telling him that he was like the father she wished she had as a child. Two weeks after filming their final scene together, Clark Gable, the King of Hollywood, passed away. Marilyn had lost the father she never had. Conspiracy, cover-up, payoffs, have become familiar catchwords in our country's social consciousness, they all apply in this case. Along with a list of names that includes former President John F. Kennedy, his brother, the Attorney General Bobby Kennedy, Teamster King Jimmy Hoffa, gangster Sam Giancana, the list goes on. 
For every name on the list, there are unanswered questions that are a matter of public record that have never been answered. Democratic presidential candidate John F. Kennedy, brother-in-law of actor Peter Lawford, met Marilyn Monroe at Lawford's beach house in Santa Monica. Lawford, who was good friends with Marilyn, arranged the introductions. Already a notorious womanizer, Kennedy was instantly smitten by the movie star. The attraction was mutual and led to a torrid affair as Lawford discreetly made his house available to the passionate lovers. John F. Kennedy, now the President of the United States, was having an extramarital affair with Hollywood bombshell Marilyn Monroe. The risks were enormous. Brother Bobby, the Attorney General, looked on with a mixture of concern and envy. The last chapter of Marilyn's life can be glimpsed in her final public appearances. Here she is seen attending the christening of Clark Gable's son, born six months after his famous father's death. On May 17, 1962, Marilyn abruptly left the filming of her current movie, Something's Gotta Give, to go to New York for the birthday celebration of her lover, who happened to be the President of the United States. Mr. President, on this occasion of your birthday, this lovely lady is not only punctitudinous, but punctual. Mr. President, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> a woman about whom <laughs> it truly may be said she needs no introduction. But let me just say, <laughs> here she is. But I'll give her an introduction anyway, Mr. President, because in the history of show business, perhaps there has been no one female who meant so much, who has done more. Lawford's introduction would prove to be an ominous foreshadowing of events soon to come. Mr. President, the late Marilyn Monroe. Who could have guessed on this festive night that Marilyn would have less than three months to live? after having had the happy birthday sung to me in such a sweet and awesome way. On June 1st, her 36th birthday, she continued to work on her movie, Something's Gotta Give. Marilyn's frequent absences sent the film's budget skyrocketing. These scenes would be the last theatrical film work Marilyn Monroe would ever appear in. Remember me, do you? No. I do. Don't pay me attention. 
to nurse. She's crazy. Am I going to stay long? I don't know. Would you like me to? I don't know where you would sleep. I don't know either yet. But if we could work that out, well, would you like me to stay? I would. I wouldn't mind. South Sea Island, when a man hurts himself and he doesn't want people to see, you know what he does? What? He has somebody else cry for him. How does that help? You'd be surprised. Can I cry for you? Yeah, silly. I'm glad. <laughs> that same evening, Marilyn went to Dodger Stadium to throw out the first ball for a benefit. Fed up with the slow progress of filming, Fox Studios fired Marilyn and sued for compensation. The starlet's career seemed on the brink of disaster. By July of 62, Marilyn's affair with JFK had cooled. Bobby Kennedy had entered the picture and had become smitten with the famous movie star. The affair escalated. Bobby openly lavished attention on Marilyn during his frequent trips to Los Angeles to visit his brother-in-law, movie actor Peter Lawford. It got to the point where Marilyn expected Bobby to get a divorce and then announced to the world that he would marry her. He, of course, would not comply. Marilyn threatened to go public. Joseph Kennedy, the patriarch of the Kennedy clan, was understandably concerned. A one-time bootlegger with old ties to organized crime, could he and his connections have played a part in Marilyn's mysterious demise? Jimmy Hoffa president of the powerful Teamsters Union and primary target of Bobby Kennedy's organized crime sweep, wanted Kennedy off his back. Hoffa hired Bernard Spindle, king of the wiretappers, to bug Marilyn's house and phone lines with the most sophisticated equipment available. Little did Robert Kennedy know his conversations with Marilyn were being recorded. These documents attest to their frequent conversations. Bobby was becoming increasingly nervous about his relationship with Marilyn. There were rumors of a pregnancy and subsequent abortion. He knew if news of this affair was leaked to the public, it would ruin his career. In the early morning hours of August 5th, 1962, Marilyn Monroe was found dead. She was lying naked, face down, on the bed, dead from an apparent overdose. Empty Nembutal pill bottles were found at her bedside. At the press conference, the coroner reports the cause of death to be an obvious suicide. Miss Monroe has suffered from psychiatric disturbance for a long time. She had often expressed wishes to give up, to withdraw, and even to die. On more than one occasion in the past, when disappointed and depressed, she had made a suicide attempt using sedative drugs. On these occasions, she had called for help and had been rescued. From the information collected about the events of the evening of August the 4th, it is our opinion that the same pattern was repeated except for the rescue. On the basis of all the information obtained, it is our opinion that the case is a problem with suicide. Did Marilyn Monroe commit suicide, or were there darker forces at work? Here are some unanswered questions that plague the case of Marilyn Monroe. Why were there no traces of Nembutal capsules found in her stomach during the autopsy? The stomach was almost completely empty. Why did Marilyn's housekeeper, Eunice Murray, change her story of the events that took place that August 5th? 
Years later, she admits that Bobby Kennedy was at Marilyn's house the evening of August the 4th. Why were there no fingerprints found? Not even Marilyn's. Why did neighbors see an ambulance outside her house at 1 a.m.? The police weren't contacted until 4.25 a.m. What happened to Marilyn's internal organs that were removed during the autopsy? And why did the deputy coroner's aide, Lionel Granderson, refuse to sign the death certificate? Marilyn's red diary was placed in a property locker safe in the coroner's office. It mysteriously disappears. Just before his disappearance, Jimmy Hoffa told a reporter, I have taped evidence that would embarrass the president and attorney general. Wiretapper Bernie Spindle's tapes are confiscated by the police and are never seen again. If Marilyn had ingested over 40 Nembutal capsules, why wasn't there a water glass found in the room? Did Marilyn Monroe commit suicide? Evidence points to a cover-up. What exactly has been hidden from us may forever remain a mystery. Marilyn's untimely death cheated her out of a life that was filled with many tomorrows, each one holding a new chance for happiness which always seemed just out of reach. After the autopsy, no one came forth to claim the body of Marilyn. It would be Joe DiMaggio who would be there for Marilyn in death, as he had in life. Joe would take care of all the funeral details as thousands of friends and strangers came to mourn the loss of Marilyn. A shaken DiMaggio would see to it that Marilyn would always have fresh flowers placed on her crypt. Flowers still appear to this day. Joe's one personal decree for the final farewells was that no Kennedy be allowed to attend the funeral. Marilyn was 36 years old when she was found dead in her home. She was in the process of renegotiating her contract with the studio. Her professional future looked bright. Her friends said that she'd never looked so beautiful. 